Tiny's fine. Oh, man. Oh, yep, there we are. Yep, it's a thing now. Uh, I'm going to pause Twitch so that way I don't cause an endless tunnel of hatred. Do whatever you gotta do. I'm gonna do it. Do it. I gotta I gotta get the chat so that way they can spam emojis. Good. We like spammed emojis or something. Oh, I, like, I love this quote. I like spamming you. What are we talking about? I don't know. Why are you asking me? Of all the things to ask right now. All right. You got the story link already? Uh, yes. Do you need it? Uh, no, I'm fine. Okay. I got it. No, here, here, it's there. There you go. You can have it. That just says fanfiction.net, doesn't it? <laughs> That's not helpful. I'm sorry. I've, I've got it. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Okay. By the way, am I is sound coming across? Am I audible? You sound good to me. I think we're Yay. probably as even levels as it can be. Uh, I'm seeing that my bars are going up as about as high as your bars. Your bars are maybe a little higher, but my mic tends to be a bit hot. Okay. Well, I I won't like scream then or anything. Maybe I will. I don't fucking know. Wooten says, I'm going to smash. quit Discord for now. Let me smash. Oh. Well, uh, hey, girl. Let, let me smash. <clears throat> anyway. Are you ready for this? No. I wrote a story today, guys, and it's top of the featured box because of you assholes, which is great. And we're going to read it. And I'm going to do all the female voices, which is a terrible idea right now. <laughs> Because I'm sick, and I've had a lot of cold medicine, and also rum, which is a great combo, let me tell you. But on the bright side, I can't feel my face, which is a nice improvement. So, I am ready, I think. Okay. As long as my sound is coming through clear, and everything is good, I'm ready. All right. This is Boops Are For Sexual by a non-pencil. Tagged for sex, non-consensual, and fetish. It is a comedy random porn story written in second person, starring Lyra, Barry Punch, Fancy Pants, Anon, and other. The description says, You've always wondered why ponies don't like you touching their noses. Maybe they just think it's weird, or that's a social faux pas in Equestria. But one day, you just can't help it anymore, and you go in for a boop. What happens next is unexpected, and actually kind of hot. Warning. Contains willing female and male ejaculation and non-consensual nose boops. And yes, the grammatical error in the title is intentional. Yeah, I get good. Anyone who said... Anyone who said that my title was grammatically incorrect can suck a dick. The people who pointed out that I misspelled some words in the description, they're fine. They can stay. That's all. Just poking fun. Oh, I would also like to point out that Priest has never read this story before, so he is going to hear this for the first time. <clears throat> I said, stop staring at me like that. Lyra says again, narrowing her eyes at you. You are sitting across from her, and a pony you've just met, who you swear looks like she's made of toothpaste at a small cafe. And you know it's rude to stare. But something has gotten into you today. You just can't seem to stop noticing pony noises. Try again. Po pony noises. There you go. This is going to take some editing. It's fine. No, ed fuck editing. We're putting this up. Fuck it. We'll do it live, man. We're putting this up as is. Okay. 
They're so small. They wiggle just a little when the ponies eat or take a sip of their teas, and they look velvety soft. And somehow, they're just so inviting. You never touched a horse's nose back on Earth, but you'd hear people talk about how fuzzy and nice their muscles were. These noses are much smaller and much cuter, but you have a feeling that touching one would be like caressing crushed velvet. Except, you don't want to caress them. No. You want to take your index finger, put it right again in the middle, and give it a little push. In you, you can feel a growing need to boop that pony snoot. Sorry, you say to Lyra. Not sorry at all. He just looks so nice today, that's all. The brush that the blush that spreads across her face is absolutely lovely. You feel a warmth in your heart at seeing it. And your crotch. Damn these adorable sexy little horses. Uh thanks. She says haltingly. But you're really staring me down here, so... Is there something on your mind? You hesitate. Lyra has been your friend for a while now, but asking to poke her nose is still a little invasive. Ponies also seem pretty sensitive about their noses, and you've never even seen another pony touch someone's nose before. They'd think... They'd probably think it's super weird. But you don't know until you ask, you suppose. At last, you can't take it any longer. Err, you say slowly. I was wondering, would it be okay if I, like, booped your nose? There's a chill in the air. The whole cafe feels like it goes silent for a moment. And you have a sense of the whole day getting heavier around you. Across the table from you, the toothpaste pony holds her hooves to her face, and her eyes get very wide. Lyra goes deathly pale, and then a slow, deep red begins to spread up her face from her neck. It's not so adorable this time. Uh, uh, on! She stammers out, almost in a cry. Then she lowers her voice into an almost, into almost a hiss, and leans across the table to you. Oh my, Celestia Anon, you cannot just go around asking to, to boop pony noses. Ah, okay, uh, why not? Lyra makes a noise like someone trying to breathe while guzzling soup at the same time. But because that's super not okay. That's a private matter. You blink. Nose boops are private. That makes, like, zero sense. It makes perfect sense! She yell whispers. You know what boops do! Again, you blink, then slowly shake your head. Another light show of colors erupts across Lyra's face. Don't lie! She snaps. I'm not! You say, holding up your hands in defense. What does it do? Well, if you really don't know, maybe it's for the best. She says, crossing her front legs and looking away from you sharply. I'm not going to be the one to tell you. Now, can we just drop it? You most certainly cannot drop it. Before, you just wanted to boop pony noses for fun. But now? Now they're forbidden fruit. Now they're a mystery, a tantalizing curiosity that you simply must satisfy. Your friend Lyra is too far away to use as your test subject. The toothpaste pony is still barely out of arm's reach, too. So, who is close by enough? You scan the area, and you see Barry Punch, a rather adorable town drunk, wandering towards the cafe probably coming to get some coffee as a pick-me-up after a late night of drinking, you'd guess. That means she'll be groggy, unsteady on her feet. 
she's the perfect target. Lyra is saying something about bodily on autonomy. Autonomy. Bodily autonomy. I think that's spelled different. Nope. Autonomy. Oh, it's autonomy. like it's like the first different word that I'm not going to say on stream. Never mind. <clears throat> Bodily autonomy means basically having control over your own body, body and having your body respected right, as, a, as a thing that you are in control of. <laughs> okay. Lyra is saying something about bodily autonomy, but you aren't listening anymore. Your sights are set on Barry. As she approaches, you rise out of your seat, standing back from the walkway as if to let her by. She looks up at you and smiles slightly, gratefully and you take in that perfect, unbooped face for just one moment longer. Then your arm begins to move. Lyra realizes way too late what you're about to do and cries out to you. Anon, stop! She screams. Barry, run! She never gets to finish the word. Your index finger comes down firmly and precisely right in the center of Barry's nose, pressing inward. You sense a tingling rush in your nethers at how perfectly soft that nose is and how delicately furry. More pleasant to touch than even a freshly skinned rabbit pelt. The way it crinkles easily in is so satisfying. As the final touch, you grin down at Barry, who has instantly gone cross-eyed, and let loose a tiny announcement of your action. Boop! Everything that happens next seems to occur all at once, and you're helpless to do anything but watch. Barry's mouth opens in surprise, then her cheeks go red. Her eyes roll back in her skull as if she is fainting. Her whole body quakes, starting with the nose, and then all the way down her shoulders and flanks. Her knees go weak and collapse under her. She tries to catch herself as she falls to the ground, barely staying in a sitting position on trembling hooves. From her mouth comes a thready, warbled moan of ecstasy and an unexpected wanting. You can see her hindquarters convulse suddenly as if she's been shocked. Then, as you watch, a small spurt of liquid erupts from between her legs, and a minute gush of clear, slick fluid trickles across the walkway, shining in the morning sun. It all clicks right away. You understand now what happens when you boop ponies. Poking them on the nose causes them to spontaneously orgasm. And it is a glorious thing! You know what you must do. As Barry Punch looks up to you, still shaking and drooling from the unexpected sensation, you are grinning back like some sort of maniac. Your eyes glint as you turn from her used-up body and look instead to your two cafe companions. Lyra is pale, standing by the table, but still not fast enough to flee from your grabbing hands. She let loose a scream. Oh, no, I'm don't! Don't! I... You silence her with a touch of a finger. Boop! A cry erupts from her mouth, and she topples backwards, clutching at her privates. Her back legs quiver in unseen rhythm as orgasmic juices flow down her thighs and rear onto the ground. She simply lies there on her back, neck arched, eyes shut and mouth open, as her body is racked by the sweet, unwilling orgasm you have given her. Now, the new girl. She's been sitting, frozen in her chair, and you pounce on her without pause. You knock her back on, out of the chair onto the ground, and she gives a little cry of fear as you pin down her front hooves above her head. Her back feet kick uselessly against your thighs as you look down into her wide-eyed, terrified face. Then, with your free hand, you delicately flick her little snout. Boop! She half whinnies, half whimpers, and a stream of thick, semi-transparent blue gel oozes from her pussy. You sniff in, and you can smell the mintiness without even getting close to her cooch. She orgasms toothpaste. You knew it. You make a mental note to consider 
further the implications of eating out a mare who could potentially have teeth whitening properties later. Right now, you have to do God's work and boop some fucking noses. At this point, the ponies in the cafe have gotten out of their chairs and are running, screaming away from the scene. You throw your head back and emit a hearty laugh as you rise above the still thrashing toothpaste pony. I am a non giver of orgasms. You bellow out, feeling the power of this moment surging through you. Then, to seek out the nearest pony to grab and to get booping. First is the tea pony who runs the cafe, coming out to check what all the commotion is. As you boop her, a warm, pleasant aroma of sick. Sick oolong formosa, man! <clears throat> Sorry. Aroma of silk oolong formosa wafts to your nostrils. As she slumps to the ground, pawing at her nethers, you step back, grinning at her. Now that's one pony you definitely wouldn't mind eating out to start your morning. But, again, for another time. You turn from the cafe, cackling, and run down the street, reaching out to boop any pony nose within arm's distance. Lily, the flower mare, collapses across her bed of flowers in a dead faint. That one orange apple pony tries to give you a kick, but you sidestep and reduce her to a swearing, convulsing mess of applesauce spewing ecstasy on the ground. You're actually pretty sure that one purple alicorn you boop emitted sparks from her pussy as she screamed and collapsed onto her little dragon assistant, who may have been crushed under her weight, who knows, who cares. All you care about is the fact that you have the power to give spontaneous, uncontrollable orgasms, and no one can stop you. And your mom told you that you'd never please a woman. If only she could see you now. Your eyes catch an unexpected movement above, and you transfix onto Rainbow Dash. She's flying down towards you, still way out of reach, and you know that you simply must have her. She hasn't noticed the bodies of the spent ponies groaning and shaking on the ground in your wake, so you have to act fast. You look around for something to knock her out of the sky with, and your eyes fall upon a butterfly net that some fortunate, unfortunate child has left on the ground. Deftly, you snatch it up, and wave at Dash to come on down. Unsuspecting, she flies down towards you, calling a hearty greeting. Oh, that's actually me, isn't it? Yes. Hey, Anon! What's... You watch as recognition dawns in her eyes at the sight of the other ponies, her friends, strewn out like autumn leaves on the street behind you. Perhaps she knows what is about to happen to her. Perhaps not. All you know is that, for once... Rainbow Dash isn't fast enough. You pull out the butterfly net and snatch her out of the air. Apparently these nets are strong enough to hold Pegasus because she gives an indignant squawk and struggles futilely as you pull her wiggling into your arms. You make yet another note to invest in butterfly net stocks later and hold your hand out in front of her face. Anon, I... She protests, stuttering. You scarcely hear her. You will not be dissuaded. With a triumphant laugh, you poke her nose and look down expectantly. Boop! Rainbow Dash's whole body tenses, thrashing in a final moment of defiance. But the sensation is apparently too much for her. Her legs crush together, but not well enough to hide the beautiful river of perfect rainbow colors which dribbles out across her fur to make a rainbow puddle on the ground. You drop her unceremoniously into the puddle of her own juices, where she gasps for breath and looks up at you, obviously furious but weak from the sensory overload. You wink at her. Just having a dash of fun, rainbow, you shout jovially at her, then run chortling away. You spot a small crowd trying to hide from you, and close on them in an instant. Laughing wildly, possessed by this urge to boop, you stab furiously into the crowd, listening to moans and whimpers as you occasionally find a target. Ponies wilt to the ground in their midst, shivering, writhing, groaning in unwilling desire. Boop! A wavering cry. Boop! 
a shriek of ecstasy. You're turning right and left, barely seeing as you move, just feeling nose after nose under your fingertip. You hear cries of protest, but you don't stop, can't stop. Not until you've made every mare in Ponyville orgasm. Not until... I say, what's... You spin, boop poised to deliver, and have just enough time to recognize your mistake. Recognize, but not stop it. There, before your already moving hand, is the face of Fancy Pants, who, contrary to the name, never wears any pants. He's looking up at you, indignant, even angry with you, as your finger points at him. He focuses on it. You realize what you're about to do and what that probably means. And you know that this is not what you have wanted to do with your day. You, that you brought this on yourself. That this may be the gayest thing that you have ever done in your life. But the attack is already away, and there's no time to stop it. As his nose wrinkles at your touch, you try to draw your hand back, but you can't help but gurgle out the world word that's already flying to your lips. Boop. <laughs> Fancy Pants topples backward with a cry. All at once, his penis is out of its sheath, expanding with blinding speed to sizes that would make even porn stars self-conscious. As he moves backwards through the air, it stiffens, the end flaring out like a blooming rose, and its small opening directs itself at you. Like laser sighting, you look down the shaft and see the stallion's balls quake, and then the vibration moves up the dick towards the tip. You have just enough time to let out a scream, which, as it turns out, is also a mistake. Creamy splooge explodes from the tip of Fancy Pants cock, shooting out like a super soaker. It impacts your face with the force of a water balloon, and you feel a sting as the goopy liquid splashes into your eyes. You try to shut your mouth, but it's already filled with the unfortunately unforgettable flavor of horse semen. The stream seems to go on and on forever, and you stumble back from the fire hose like sensation of being face blasted by this dapper aristocrat. You both topple away from each other, him moaning in joy, you clawing at your face like it's been covered in somehow living acid. You can practically feel all the tiny cartoon sperm wiggling against your skin. You scream and scream until at l you at last have to breathe in. And even then, you have the taste in your lungs, the pungent musk of horse chiz. At last, wiping his spunk from your eyes, you look up at Fancy Pants. He looks at you, obviously annoyed, and shakes his head slowly, head slowly. Anon, what kind of stallion do you take me for? He anon. He growls. I demand you take me to dinner before we do such things. I am a gentleman after all. He stands and brushes off his suit coat. He places his monocle back in his eye and then turns to you once more and shakes his head with a tisking noise. You can feel tears running down your face, mixing with his seed in a super salty mixture of shame. Then, all at once, he smiles at you. He even winks as he turns from you to continue on his way. Just remember, lad, he says as he saunters away from you. Do things like that again, and you're bound to end up with more than egg on your face. End. Author's note. Boop! <sighs> this has been? This has been... Boops are for sexual by non pencil narrated by flutter priest and voices by a non pencil we did the thing we did we done we done did do it we done did do it and it's at the top of the feature box congratulations oh god i'm pretty sure this is yet another reason i'm going to hell just putting that out there. <laughs> like, pretty sure. So, guys, what do you think? Uh, 
Oh, I'm looking at what Equal just said. Is that a reference to something, or is it? I mean, it's a cigarette thing. Do you? Who do you want to say that? Do you want Priest to say it? <clears throat> I'm sure Priest will say it. I will, because I'm a whore. Lucky Strikes means fine tobacco. <laughs> Good job. Uh, yay. Oh. Okay. Are we That's done? all. <laughs> we can be done. Okay. You guys heard it. I'll we download can... this and put it out on podcasts and stuff. I'll try cool, the edges. Cool. And... Then I'll link it and stuff. I see you, folks. Good night, everyone. Don't be shit. <laughs>